Okay, let's get started. Can everyone hear me? Okay, we have some more people. Come on in, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's not enough seats. Uh, there's not enough seats for everyone. But so. <laughs> All right, thanks uh, everyone for coming to this uh, workshop. So I want to give you a heads up. It will be a very practical workshop. No PowerPoint presentations, no nothing of this nature. Uh, my name is Igor Chigrin. I am an expert neighborhood consultant with uh, Win Global. And uh, over the past 10 years, I helped uh, Canadian small companies and medium-sized companies to open up international markets. That includes about six years of mandate with uh, CME, Canadian Manufacturers and Exporters, uh, where I was a uh, qualified uh, consultant for any matters related to export market expansion and export market diversification. So I am happy to share with you uh, over the next uh, 30 minutes uh, the wealth of experience in uh, developing export markets for Canadian companies. Um, and typically uh, when I worked with other companies. Their number one concern when it comes to export market diversification was that they didn't have any particular framework how to find the markets, and how to enter those markets. Uh, it's uh, in this lack of toolkit really prevented uh, many companies from their international starting their international journey. But uh, if they had a toolkit, if they if they knew at least where to start with, then they could have the, they would have done a very good job for their communities because exporting outside Canada not only makes you money, but it's also very patriotic because it helps your community create jobs in your community. So when thinking about uh, your international markets, you think also that uh, you also need to think that uh, by diversifying your export markets, by entering new export markets, you also help your communities. Okay, so uh, now let's get started. I have some paperwork here. Uh, please grab some brochures uh, because those brochures will uh, have the particular you know, ideas and tools for you how you can start diversifying, uh, where to start with when it comes to diversifying your export markets. And the one particular tool that uh, is really good and I wanted to show you is right here on the screen because Comtrade database. Uh, typically, when you have no idea what markets are good for your products, what you can do is you can go to this database, do the queries that uh, very easy to do, and we're going to do some queries right now at the show. Uh, the result will give you a list of potential export markets. So at least we have some ideas where to start from, and then you can use other tools in order to find the potential clients in those markets. Yeah, does it make sense? Okay, so uh, I need a volunteer uh, and I need somebody to tell me their product. So what kind of product you make that you want to sell internationally? Audio speakers, okay, fair, fair enough. So then uh, the way this database works is it works based on the overall product description. So we're gonna we're gonna try that right now. We're gonna click uh, get data. And the audio speaker will be electronic equipment. So that's what uh, that's what we need to to look for. Or maybe sound emitting equipment, something like that. And if we have internet. It will be really helpful. Okay, that's much better. So here's how it works. Uh, you see the query form here. So one, two, three. Uh, one and two, leave it as is. And by the way, in the handouts, you have a step-by-step uh, -step guide how to use this database. So you can do it on your own, step-by-step. Uh, then what you need to select is here in the section three, 
Um, in terms of the uh, period, I usually recommend to go with either 2017 or 2016 because uh, the data may not be complete for 2018. So let's, let's say 2017. In the reporters field, we delete all and we put Canada. And in the uh, partners, we delete world and we put all. So all will give you the breakdown uh, of the export by, by export market. And a trade flow, what do we put? Export or import? Export, yeah, of course. So we wanted to see where, uh, where Canadian companies export the particular you know, audio or electronic devices. Now, uh, the, the last thing we need to do is we need to find uh, the right uh, category, right name for these audio, uh, audio devices. And typically, either you, if you know the HS code, the HS code is usually the product code that's used in customs. If you know the HS code, it's very easy. If not, then you can, you know, experiment doing something like audio. And let's see if it actually gives you, uh, see, microphones, uh, sound recording apparatus. Is that sound recording, amplifiers, anything of this nature? Uh huh. Okay. Well, again, for just for the uh, for our purpose, let's do it this way. Let's pick this category. Okay. Get rid of everything else. And I have no idea what's going to happen, but let's click get data. Okay. Good. We have some results. So let me just go down. And I am going to filter. I should not filter. I'm going to sort by the trade value. So this is the actual trade value. So what, what, what this database shows us that uh, in 2017, Canada, ex Canada exported uh, two, almost 200 million worth of this particular audio equipment category. And uh, the big chunk of it went to the States, which is not surprising. But this list will also give you the idea of what other markets are demanding Canadian audio equipment. So, for example, China and Hong Kong, who could have guessed? What? About $15 million. Good market. France, United Kingdom, Australia, Emirates, and so forth. So you go down the list, and then what you do, you apply a few other tactics that uh, I also put in the handouts. Uh, first of all, you identify which, uh, which of the markets have the greater number of your ideal buyers, because I would imagine that you know who your buyers are. In this case, for example, your buyers may be, let's say, uh, concert halls, maybe, or maybe, or maybe universities. So it, it, it's up to you, but uh, t typically you know who your buyer is, and you look at, okay, how many of those concert halls I have in the United States? Of course, United States is number one market and probably will always be number one market, but if you, are, uh, if you have a goal to diversify your markets and move away from the dependency on the states, then you would look into the same stats uh, and say figure how many of those concert halls in China are in China. Right? Then when you know that, then you can you know, make some other to take some other steps and find your contact, f find the contacts and find connections. So we're going to speak about uh, the connections, uh, how to find connections later on. Uh, but any any questions on the database and how it's used? Okay, so at least at least it gives you a good idea. It doesn't it doesn't mean that uh, your particular uh, product will be successful in say Chinese market. Maybe it will be more successful in a small Italian market. Who knows? I mean, smaller compared to the states. Uh, but see, all of these markets look pretty good. Yes. Mm -hmm. What kind of product you want? Because you just have heard it in test. Yes. So, how long the size can it be to get the real product? Like Sergio was talking about. Mm -hmm. loudspeakers. Yes, yes. Or is this like the general picture? Uh, it's more of, a, yes, more of a general picture. I believe you can go up to six digits. Let me see. If I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, it could possibly go up to six digits. Uh, but anyways, the, this the, it has some limitations. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, the purpose of this database is to rather give you the general idea of where to go to, because I, I met so many people, so many uh, business owners and you know, executives that uh, wanted to wanted to start you know diversifying their export market, but they just didn't know where to start with. And this was the icebreaker. At least they saw, oh, okay, they, this, these are the ideas. And you know, when you show this list to the future exporter, potential exporter, they, they tell you something. Oh, I have a connection in Germany. I should probably call to you know to that connection I met at the show a few years ago. I have a family in Italy. I have whatever you know, a friend in France that uh, my university buddy. And so they started uh, you know thinking how they can connect with somebody in the market. And in most cases, they, they find somebody. OK? Yes? Uh, good question. So the question is, uh, can we find out what companies exported the products and imported the products? Uh, in Canada, there are some limitations. Uh, you cannot find the list of exporters but you can find the list of importers. There's a separate database, I can write it down for you, or maybe I can even show you later if we have time. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately you cannot find out the names of uh, exporters. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, so uh, then what I wanted to do for the rest of the workshop is uh, I wanted to uh, go through these handouts um, this one, uh, where you can where you can find how how to select the right export markets. Uh, this one is pretty self-explanatory. So uh, once you when you have the list of markets uh, after using Comtrade database, then it's pretty much uh, uh, your product and competitive analysis, figuring out figuring out which markets will be most applicable and appropriate to your product. But I wanted to focus rather on the other page. So where can you find reliable buyers or suppliers? This is another tricky question that uh, uh, that uh, I frequently uh, I'm frequently asked. And again, if you are in a situation that you have no idea what are the tools available for you uh, to find to find the reliable buyers or suppliers, then you are stuck. Even if you know that, let's say Germany is a good market for you, how do you find somebody in Germany if you don't have anyone? Okay. So. I put a list of uh, those sources of reliable information, and as you see, uh, as you see, internet is the very least of it, the very last option. Uh, what we typically recommend is only if you are not successful in uh, any of these tools, that uh, any of the other tools that you have here. Only then you go to the internet and try to find the luck there. Um, you know, there are certain limitations uh, about using internet to develop your international business. And the limitation and uh, the number one is you know, the number of fraud that is out there. So don't, don't be the victim of fraud and also the waste of time. Because if you go through, for example, bilateral chambers of commerce, uh, chances are that uh, you're gonna get a contact of a reliable potential buyer or potential supplier if you are looking for, say, foreign supplies. Uh, but you won't waste too much time on screening because typically those bilateral chambers they have uh, pre uh, like they have vetted list list of contacts and they will give you only those that, that are reliable. Yeah. Uh, anyone is anyone familiar with bilateral chambers of commerce? Did, do you guys all understand what I'm talking about? No. Okay. So let me explain so what bilateral chambers are. So bilateral chambers are non-profit organizations that are typically funded by. Uh, two governments, the government of Canada and uh, the government of a foreign country. And their mandate is to promote trade between the countries. The example of the chambers uh, could be, for example, what is Canada-India Chamber of Commerce, uh, Canada-China Business Association, you know, Canada-Peru Chamber of Commerce. So they could, be, they could use different names, Board of Trade, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Trade Association. But anyways, the, 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 these are the same organizations, and again, their mandate is to promote trade. They have a list of vetted contacts already, so all you need to do is to connect with them. Uh, maybe not necessarily become a member, but at least start, at least connect with them and uh, explain them what you're looking for, and see if they can help you out. Make sense? Anyone had experience with any of the chambers before? 
How was it? Mm -hmm. Okay, can I change this also? Good, good, good. Did they help you? Oh, there you go. There you go. So we have an example right here. Okay. Uh, the second one is industry association in the foreign market. Uh, because again, you know your ideal buyer. Uh, let's say with uh, with uh, with the, with the audio equipment that you brought. Uh, let's say your ideal buyer is uh, let's say concert hall. Right? Uh, chances are that there probably is some sort of association of the maybe not the concert halls, but uh, maybe you know entertainment facilities in the target market. And especially if you are looking for developed market like European, uh, you know, North American markets, chances are they have those industry associations. So instead of you looking randomly on Google, what are the concert halls in Germany, and you know, piling that list, uh, why don't you contact that association in Germany that uh, represents those organizations, and uh, yeah, ask ask that as the organization, because maybe you are targeting small concert halls versus large concert halls. So it's a waste of time for you to uh, pursue the large concert halls because your equipment is not designed to meet their needs. Okay? Uh, your existing suppliers or buyers. Uh, you know, uh, in international trade, international trade is a lot about uh, connections and relationships. So if you already have uh, the connections and if you are looking for, you know, non-competing, no, no non-competing buyers, uh, then your existing buyers uh, could, al could could also give you give you the connections. Yeah, just talk to people. You know, if you're looking for connections elsewhere, talk to as many trade contacts as you can. Uh, Export promotion agency uh, in Canada, it's a Canadian Trade Commissioner Service. This is the federal uh, export promotion agency in Canada that uh, has a mandate to promote Canadian exports. Uh, they do uh, limited matchmaking. So if you know again, if you know exactly what uh, is the profile of the companies you're looking for, uh, it will help their life easy because they also have a vetted list of you know, local potential clients that are willing to consider buying Canadian goods. So don't underestimate that. Uh, you have to be at a certain level. Uh, if you're just getting started uh, in international trade uh, and in business overall, then uh, you are too young for trade commissioner service, I'd say. Uh, you have to be, they call it export ready, so there has to be well, sustainable uh, local operations before you, before you can contact the service and be, before they can help you. Okay? Uh, trade directories, that's another option for you. Uh, again, not, it, it's, it's a little bit better than Google, but still uh, sometimes, uh, those databases sometimes have outdated information. Uh, so you don't want to, uh, you don't want to call the company that no longer exists. So you have to be careful with, with that. And uh, trade directories could be done in Bradstreet, Scott's directories. Um, uh, sometimes you can also leverage credit, well, those international credit rating agencies. Uh, but again, that's uh, not the ideal way. As an ideal way is to get a life connection with somebody who can refer you to the reliable buyer or supplier and establish good relationship with them. Uh, by the way, anyone dealt with uh, trade commissioner service? Experience with? Yeah? Yeah. Can you give uh, uh, details? It's, uh, there's a government program called ATS. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for uh, high growth firms, right? AGS? Is, isn't it for high growth firms? No? Uh, yes, you're right. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 You know, they used to be overfunded. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay. Good. Good. Okay. So, in fact, uh, that's everything that I wanted to share. Uh, and we have 10 minutes for questions and answers. So I'd love to get your questions and, you know, connect with you either here or after, uh, after the presentation. Okay. Any, any questions or maybe any examples that you want to share? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the question was, uh, what's the difference between this database and trade maps? Uh, usually the trade maps are based on this data. It's just a visual. Uh, visually, sometimes it's easier to use the map. If you're a map person, like, a, I mean, I, I grew up with a map on my wall, so. 
<laughs> I'm very comfortable with using this. Yeah, the data is the same because uh, under uh, th th this database belongs to United Nations, and every country in the world reports data, trade data to the United Nations. Okay. Okay, if no questions, I'll let you go. Uh, if you don't mind, just uh, leave me your contact information so we could connect after that. If you have cards, uh, please let's exchange them. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm also available if you have any questions by phone or email. Uh, so please take my card and you can connect there after. Okay? Thank you very much. Or if you have questions you want to chat with me, I'm st I'll still be here for like 10 or 15 minutes.